All right, everyone, I'm going to do some questions here from folks on Twitter. I'm not able to get to all of them, but uh, picking three here that I think help kind of tell a diverse story of where the Rangers are. I want to start with uh, a great question from Billy uh, at Billy Flan on Twitter, uh, expressing a little bit of concern about the Rangers acquisitions blocking their young pitchers. I'll read his tweet verbatim. Big name free agents are exciting, but isn't a large part of the equation to have homegrown talent that's affordable through the arbitration years. Will the up and coming starting pitchers be blocked at the big league level? Billy's totally right. You know, the Rangers have made a splash in free agency, but they do need desperately their young guys to come up and not just, you know, be borderline starters, uh, but, you know, be significant contributors of the, you know, on the mound, uh, and and the position player level as well. You know, you, not all these guys are going to be all-stars, but gosh, you'd like to believe you can get at least one all-star in what is a really good farm system uh, multiple. Am I, am, I, am I crazy in asking that? But you need production, right? You definitely need these guys to come up and produce. But from a pitching standpoint, you're not blocking any of them. Uh, they're five starters, okay? It's not like the quarterback position where if the Chiefs somehow ended up with a first overall pick and, you know, they – they happen to draft Bryce Young, let's say. Well, Bryce Young's blocked because Patrick Mahomes isn't going anywhere and you can't, I mean, I guess you could have a two-quarterback offense. That's not something we've we've really seen have success. You get my point. Five starting pitchers, there's room for guys, right? Uh, and guys get hurt. You know, it's the most volatile position in baseball uh, from a health standpoint, pitching. So, uh, you know, a team doesn't go through a season with just five starters. But, you know, the other thing is it's not like any of these guys are ready or, or – let me backtrack. It's not like any of these guys who are, are, you know, in that young prospect group have proven that they are worthy or deserving of, you know, a spot that gives them 30 starts a year. The guys who have been up there, Dane Dunning, Glenn Otto, Cole Reagans, they've had moments where you're like, I can see it. All right. I can see it, but they're not there yet. I don't think anyone would look at their performances and say, you got, I mean, what are you doing? You got to give this guy a spot in the rotation. That's not a knock on them. All right. That's just, that means there's still more growth to be had. And, with lighter rocker, excuse me. <coughs> Apologies, getting choked up over this. White uh, and Cole Wynn and, and all the others. I mean, they they haven't even gotten to the majors yet, and who knows if if their performance this year uh, will be worthy enough of that. You know, that sort of an opportunity. So uh, you're not blocking anyone. You know, Martin Perez. Uh, on the qualifying offer, maybe that means that there isn't really a long-term future for him beyond the season. We'll see. Uh, and then, you know, who knows what the rest of these guys, and the reality is at least one, maybe two, of these guys are going to get moved in a trade. And so uh, you're not really blocking anyone. And and I promise you, the Jack Leiter is dominating double A and gets caught up and is dominating triple A. And it is clear that this guy is ready or any of those guys, White, Rocker, Leiter, uh, Reagans, Otto, any of them there'll be a spot for them. Uh, they're, they're not going to be blocked. Uh, I, again, I can promise you that. Uh, but it's a great question, Billy, for sure. Uh, and then just uh, uh, jumping on, Jacob asked, will Jack Leiter have a chance to break camp? I guess he'll have a chance. It's not going to happen. Uh, all right, question uh, question coming from, let's see here, let's go with uh, uh, Christian. He wants to know, while the, the focus has been primarily on pitching, how are the Rangers handling the catcher spot? Are they content to stick with Heim or are they looking upgrade? And then uh, we had a question as well from uh, Justin who wanted to know if the Rangers should sign Kevin, Pl uh, Pl uh, sorry, getting choked up again, Kevin Ploiecki, who has caught both DeGrom and Nathan Avaldi. I, I think that there's a, a good chance that Kevin Ploiecki gets uh, signed back into the organization after his little, uh, uh, you know, soiree last year at the end of the season, uh, you know, for, for those reasons, right? The relationships, probably something that Evaldi will encourage, something that DeGrom will encourage as well. But as far as big picture catcher uh, spot, Jonah Heim, obviously. Uh, you got Sam Huff uh, still, you know, let's not forget about Sam. And then Mitch Garver. Now, is Mitch Garver going to, you know, only be a catcher? No, he'll DH to get his bat in the lineup. And he might DH more than he catches to keep his bat in the lineup and keep him healthy. Uh, maybe he ends up playing a little first base. I think with Jonah Heim, the Rangers really liked the, the progress he showed last year offensively. His numbers offensively did kind of dip a little bit, but possible fatigue, right? He caught more than he ever has. It's a very taxing position. But I think that it's a fair question to ask uh, if you're the Rangers, can you do it again? Let's, or, or you know, maybe a, a, you know, a challenge of 
Let's see you do it again. And let's see you grow from that before we're locking in anyone long-term in that spot. So I think the Rangers have some options there. And again, they might add a, a veteran back. Might. I'm pretty sure they will add a veteran backup. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Rangers have a three catcher. Uh, uh, I don't want to say rotation, but a three catcher uh, roster uh, with, you know, a veteran backup, maybe someone like Kevin Ploiecki, Mitch Garver, who can come in and catch maybe once or twice a week. And then Jonah Heim, uh, who's there as, as the primary catcher even though I think Mitch Garver ends up with more, more bats. Uh, and then Tim wants to know about, you know, the Rangers opening day left fielder. Uh, Nathan asks, will the Rangers trade for Brian Reynolds, who could certainly fill that role? Uh, I think the, the opening day left fielder is not in the organization currently. So I, I don't know who that might be. Is it a Jake McCarthy type? Is it a David Peralta, someone else? I don't know. Obviously could be a Bubba Thompson, uh, you know, or someone in the organization, Ezekiel Duran. Uh, and then as far as Brian Reynolds, listen, I'm not going to say no, but Dalton Varsho, who is not as good as Brian Reynolds, uh, you know, it, it required a pretty, pretty strong package uh, in return. So the question is, if you're the Rangers, how good do you think Brian Reynolds is? You know, is this a guy who is going to be a, a perennial all star? Because if he is, then all right, let's let's make it happen. Uh, and maybe it's worth the, the pack. I mean, you're going to have to probably give up two in your top 10 at least, you know, and maybe. Maybe three. I, you know, I, I don't know. It depends. Uh, how good do you think Brian Reynolds is? My guess is Brian Reynolds isn't a Ranger. Uh, he goes elsewhere. Uh, the Rangers don't have to trade these prospects away just because there's depth. Sometimes there's a lot of value in holding on to them. My guess is he's not a Ranger, but I'm not going to rule it out. So those are some great questions. Appreciate y'all. Looking forward to talking more Rangers baseball with you guys.